rare black-footed ferret. For five days, twice a year, every year, a team of Arizona Game and Fish biologists and a pack of volunteers venture into the darkness of Aubrey Valley to count black-footed ferrets. And they're all color-coordinated, so gray route, gray UTM points, so where there are roads, we spotlight from the truck, and where there aren't roads, we spotlight from backpack points. And all these points have already been uploaded into your GPSs, so it makes it really easy for backpackers to navigate around at night. The black-footed ferret is one of the most endangered mammals in North America. In fact, they were thought to have gone extinct in the mid-1970s until a small colony was discovered in Wyoming in 1981. The last surviving members of that group were taken into captivity a few years later to begin a captive breeding program in an effort to save the species. With only 18 of them left in the world, the recovery process was a daunting one. Aubrey Valley near Seligman is one of eight reintroduction sites in the United States and Mexico. The initial captive breeding process included partners like the Phoenix Zoo, who raised and cared for the ferrets until they were able to begin reintroducing them back into the wild. In Aubrey Valley, a preconditioning and breeding facility was built so the captive-born ferrets could become adjusted to their new surroundings. In the spring, pregnant females were released into the valley so their kits would be wild-born. The success of the program has grown every year, so keeping a good record of the numbers and locations of the ferrets is where the spotlighting program comes in. So if you look at this map, obviously our hot routes are going to be 8 and 66 and 4 and 5. So we have those covered tonight with the volunteers that we have. Okay. And then the first two nights we had every single route covered, all 14 of them. Wow. So this is why we're catching so many more ferrets is because we're, we're using this method. The method is pretty simple shine a bright spotlight out across an area that ferrets are known to inhabit. When a ferret looks toward the light, their eyes shine a very distinct bright green. Once an active burrow is located, the team places a trap on the main opening. So we have a nice active burrow. You can see the active scat from the prairie dogs here. This is right where we were seeing the ferrets. So we want to set this trap right inside like so making it sort of an airtight seal. And we're going to wrap this around and wrap it up and give it the appearance that there's no escape, that it's just an extension of the, the prairie dog tunnels. Make this a, a tight seal around the, around the entrance to the tunnel. So, when the ferret runs up, it's not going to know that it's still, or not within the tunnel. It's actually going to th think it's still within the tunnel, when in reality it's in the trap. Like that. Now that's a ferret trap. We'll plug the rest of the holes with big gulps. Plugging up other possible escape routes helps ensure the ferret will end up in the trap. Once the trap is set and the location marked with a reflector, the team heads out again. Ferrets aren't the only nocturnal creatures that the spotlighters find in the middle of the night. Um, your depth perception is totally off at night, so just... Well, I got one, right there. I'm pretty sure you're right. No, you know what? That was orange. Yeah, yeah that's that. a rabbit. That's, that's a rabbit. rabbit. So, so far, our owl survey is going pretty well. <laughs> Sometimes they'll be real cooperative and hold their head up, and you can see that emerald green eye shine. Your partner can run right out onto the animal, and he'll even stay right there in the burrow so you know that you have the exact burrow to set the trap on. And other times, they'll disappear, and you just kind of have to rely on your partner to guide you to that burrow and, uh, and set a trap. And sometimes they just get out and start running. <laughs> the set traps are checked every hour for captured ferrets. Right on! Score! <laughs> <laughs> okay, just pull it out? Yeah, just pull it straight out. Once the ferrets are captured, they're taken to a field station where their health is checked and they're given electronic tags. 
It's a way to individually mark these animals, so if they're recaptured again, you know exactly which animal is the animal that we're actually dealing with. So uh, among that, we're going to be doing health assessments and probably drawing blood on some of these guys. Hi, handsome. And he's definitely a male. So you're just playing on the animal's biology to run into something dark where it feels safe. So when you take the blanket off of here, because we're darn sure not going to reach in there and pull him out. The ferrets are transferred from their traps into a plastic tube that lets the biologist check if it's been tagged from an earlier capture. So he's a recap, but we're not sure from where yet, whether it's this event or previous years. So he's a wild born from 2006. Okay, so let's flip through our data sheets from this event to make sure we haven't caught him up again from this event. And if we haven't, then we'll just boost him for canine distemper. There we go. For a complete workup, the animals are anesthetized for safe handling. Just take a quick look at his teeth. God, look at the size of those compared to a domestic ferret. He's got a fracture. Bad. Yeah, that's yeah. a bad tooth. Mm -hmm. But luckily, these guys just don't have issues. His back of his teeth look really good. Since ferrets um, are nocturnal mammals, capturing and treating them requires staying up all night. And even the most professional workers can start to get a little punchy. Sweet emerald eyes. Oh, yes. Good times never <laughs> seem so good. Once the ferrets are checked out and immunized, they're taken back to the burrow where they were captured and released that same night. Oh, there he goes. Now, time for the candy. Little prairie dog snack. Prairie dogs are the main source of food for black-footed ferrets, and the widespread eradication of prairie dogs across the West is one of the reasons the ferret population fell into such steep decline. But the recovery program is working. This spotlighting event broke previous records. There were 43 total captures, and 20 of those were new wild-born ferrets. The surveys are critical to keep track of the condition of the colony, and as you can see, they are very labor-intensive. So without the dedicated volunteers, none of this would be possible. It's just, it's just a kick, and it's such a privilege to be able to participate in this kind of an opportunity where you actually get to put something back, where you get to do something right. You know, we, we mess up a lot of things as humans, but sometimes we do things that are really, really right, and this is one of those things. And to get to be a part of it is just an incredible privilege. The surveys are done every spring and fall, so there are plenty of opportunities for the public to get involved in this unique wildlife program.